Welcome everyone to another Bowls Victoria training webinar. Tonight we're going to unpack the really important role of a side manager. Uh, my name is Matt Tobre. I'm the Club Education and Training Manager at Bowls Victoria. And with me tonight, I have uh, Mel Allen, our Communications and Marketing Manager. Mel's going to man the uh, questions. I'll go through how you can do that. And again, we have got our experts uh, from the Officiating and Laws Committee, our co-chairs, John Roberts and Bob Carlson. Just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you're new to uh, this form of learning through Zoom, uh, tonight's session is a webinar. It's a little bit different to our normal uh, Zoom meetings. The big difference is that you won't be able to see each other. So there's no one, uh, no cameras. You only get to see um, the hosts. It's a little bit like a, a cinema sitting back um, and the information is presented to you. Uh, you do have the option at the bottom of asking questions. So please, if there's any questions that you think of throughout tonight's session, throw them in there and Mel will be manning those and uh, Mel will be coming back on to discuss some of the uh, commonly asked questions. We are going to record tonight's session. Um, we also recorded this morning's session, so we'll be using that to uh, inform some of our members that, that don't attend tonight and we'll be uploading that to our website. Here's the agenda. We'll try and get through tonight's session as quickly as we can. Uh, firstly, I'll have a quick look at unpacking the role of a side manager. I'll revisit a little bit of Bowls Link. So how to, um, who can enter results and the result process. Also how to activate your own Bowls Link account. We've still got a lot of our members who are not logging into Bowls Link. I'll do a Bowls Link demo. So if you're new to doing Bowls Link and you're going to be, become the side manager, I'll show you how to do teams and results. We'll then get our experts, John and Bob on, and they'll go through some of the really crucial conditions of play that all our side managers need to know. And then, as I said, Mel will come in and, and discuss some of the questions and I'll finish with um, some best practice and how you can get some resources uh, from Bowles Victoria. All right, side manager role. As I said, I, I think this is a really important role. And I, I, I believe there's a lot of side managers joining us tonight that don't actually realize how important this role is. Um, one part of your role is obviously filling out the cards and organizing the rinks. I believe Bowls Link should be added to your role. It replaces um, what we used to do with the yellow sheets. And Bob and John, our experts, they're going to discuss some of the, the crucial conditions of play that you really need to know if you're going to be a side manager. All right, Bowls Link. We all love it. Um, I get a lot of questions about um, who can enter results. And I think we need to clarify some of these. So the first people that can enter results are our club administrators. So they have access to the database plus access to all the club entries and our primary contact. Now, a lot of regions and playing areas will ask for a primary contact for each club. That's the person that we set up all our entries around and they get to do teams and results. Both, both our club administrators and primary contacts, they can allow our side managers to do this role as well. And I'll go through the process of allowing other members to manage the entry. Once you have managing rights, you can then allocate those rights to another member in your club. So the process starts with our club administrators and our primary contact. Once we start importing players, we can allow them to manage 
And once you have managing rights, you can allow others to manage as well. Okay, here's our result process. Now, a lot of our regions and playing areas are moving towards the home team can finalise. We still have a couple of regions and playing areas that are using the away team confirms. I'll just remind our Metro clubs, you are moving towards the home team finalises this season. So if you're in a Metro club and you're responsible for Bowls Link, this is the process that you will need to follow this season. So the home team finalises, does it, a lot of the role goes to the home team. So both uh, clubs enter their teams prior to the game. If you're the away team and you have some late changes, it's really important that you make those changes before the game starts or before the results and the match gets finalised. So just a reminder there, the home team cannot make changes to the away team. So if you have the, you're the away team and you've got some late changes, make them before the match gets finalised. The home team will match the skips. What I mean by matching the skips is making sure that the correct rinks are playing each other. The away team can do that, but I believe the home team should be doing that. Only the home team can enter results. But you do, and you do have the ability if you make a mistake, and I'll show you this, that you can unfinalize the rink as well. Then the home team hits finalize match. That game is then finalized and no changes can be made. So if there's an error, you can appeal that with your um, controlling body. The away team confirms. It re requires a bit of a, a two-way process here. The home team and the away team, they do the teams like normal. The home team matches the skips. The away team can ma match the skips if they haven't been done by the home team. Only the home team puts the results in with the ability to unfinalize the rinks and change them if they're incorrect. The away team doesn't get the option of putting the results in. The home team I had down here hits complete. That's no longer. The away team needs to confirm and the match is finalized. So there's our two processes. Um, as you can see, the home team finalizes. The process is done a lot quicker and then we get a lot more matches finalized where away team confirms, we do rely on that away team confirming once the match is finished. And they generally do that at, back at their club and that can take some time. Activating your Bowls Link account. I'm still working with a lot of our members who haven't logged into Bowls Link. So if you're a side manager and you need to do Bowls Link this year, you will need to activate your account. I'll do a demonstration of this uh, when we go to Bowls Link part, but basically you need to go to bowlslink.com.au. You need to click on new to Bowls Link. You need to put your email address in. Without closing your browser, you need to retrieve a code from your email account. You need to enter that code and set up a password. One of the things that lets this process down is number three, not having a valid email in your Bowls link. So you can always speak to your club administrator to make sure your correct email is in the system. And then our members can set up their own password. All right, Bowls link. Let's do a bit of a demo now on how to enter teams and results. I'm going to go to a bit of a split screen here. The member on your left will be the home team and the member on the right will be the away team. So there's the reset and new to bowls link. Click here. 
So if I was to click, they, they're both exactly the same. You would put your email address in here, hit recover password. You need to access your email without closing your browser. Put your password in, sorry, the code they'll give you, and then you can set up your password. All right, I'm gonna log in as the home person. This is uh, Laura. And you'll see Laura once using her ID number and her password, she's gone straight into her profile. And it's the My Clubs profile because it says member overview at the top. If it's your club administration profile, you'll see members up the top, not member overview. Right, I'm going to log in as Jamie, who's the way team. Now, Jamie has a profile selection. So straight away, that says to me, Jamie has club admin rights. And you can see there, club admin, which is a heading. I'm still getting a lot of our members clicking on the heading. You've got to click on your club name that's underneath. And there's the My Clubs. So if I click on the club name, I get access to the database. So it looks very different to the My Clubs profile. I click on the My Clubs profile and they look the same. All right, once you're in your My Clubs profile, you go to competitions. You'll see Jamie has My Club entries. That's because he's a club administrator. He gets access to any entry that is linked to the club. All right, once you're in there, you just need to find your competition. So the one I'm going to do is this one here. You have two options. You have manage entry and manage results. The only time I would use manage entry is if I wanted to allow one of my members or my players to manage this entry. So for example, Michael Imazani, I might want to allow him to manage. I click the edit pencil. Generally the first player is expanded. Go down to Mike Limazani, hit the down arrow. And Mike, as you can see, already has managing rights. So I would need to tick that and save. So let's see if Judy's got managing rights. She doesn't. So I tick that and hit save. So I get a lot of questions about um, allowing players to manage. I'll go through that again. Instead of going to manage results, I did manage entry and I went to my player list. I clicked on the player and I ticked allow this player to manage. All right, we're going to go into the game here. So manage results instead of manage entry. We're going to look at round one. View results. And you'll see that MCC who are playing Auburn in this round, they've already entered their teams. So Auburn will need to put these teams in before the game starts. So to put teams in, it's pretty straightforward. Select team. Round one, you'll see that it'll only be the primary contact in this drop-down list. So to, to access all your players, you need to click the blue import button. That's only for round one and import. Now, obviously, if you have a new player that hasn't played before, you'll need to use the import. I should be able to now grab all my players from the drop down menu and hit save. I don't need to do that for all my teams. Today, I've only got two teams in here just to show a quicker version of the process. Okay, so now the teams are in. Um, the match has been played. 
Uh, now this process, just to uh, refresh here, is uh, it's the home team can finalise. So if I go into Jamie's one, he's MCC. He'll see both the teams there. But as you can see, what the home team can see and what the away team can see are, are very different. So the away team don't get the update result buttons. And all they can do is manage their team or swap the away teams. And up here, they only get the import teams. All right, so the home team will put the results in. Pretty close rink, that one. And you'll see that the rink gets finalized. Now, if you make a mistake, you can unfinalize the side match. Hit OK, and you get a chance to update the result. Oh, well, we won't put 118 in there. We hit save. OK, update results for team two. And hit save. Now, you'll see the finalize match button down the bottom has now been activated. And I suggest that you don't click that unless both side managers are happy with what they see in Bowls Link. And really, only the side, home side manager needs to be doing this on a, on a device. So, Matt, can I just interrupt you there really briefly? Yep. Um, very specific question here. Um, and it had come through earlier as well about having duplicate players in the same side, uh, which we can see there now on screen with Anne Scott playing in two positions on the left. Yeah. Okay. So this comp here that I've set up, I haven't put that restriction in. Most oh. of our comps do have that restriction which is a great question. Um, so that won't be allowed and you'll get an error saying that the person can't be in two rinks for the same game. So just to clarify, um, the same player can play in multiple sides in different divisions, but it should error if it's in the same side. Yeah, so divi multiple divisions are generally separate competitions. So you can you can definitely have the same player in multiple competitions, um, but where you'll get an error here is, and I apologies for not applying it. Um, the system won't allow Anne to be in those two rinks. It'll come up with an error saying Anne is already in one rink. Great, right, thank you. And just one more quick one: um, if the players in the away team are incorrect. Yeah, so that as you can see on this screen, there's no way that the home team can change the away team. So they can only, um, if they click manage teams, they only get access to their team, which is Auburn. Um, so really the uh, MCC need to be switched on here and make sure that change is done before the home team finalizes. I think answers it. Um, oh, sorry, I'm just reading that question to clarify if the team managers are not doing bowls link. We might. Um, mm, that's a good question. Um, and I got that comment after this morning's session. Some clubs, um, generally our bigger clubs, they have one person who will look after all the bowls link. So that generally gets done later on. I, I would be discouraging one person doing all of your bowls link. Um, I would be recommending that our side managers take this role on. And it's really, as you can see, it's only the home side manager that needs the access on the day to put the results in and hit finalize match. The away team can have that done before the game starts. Am I right to go on, Mel? Yep, go ahead. 
Thank you. Thank you. All right, so hit finalize match. You'll see that the action buttons have now disappeared. If I go back to that game for Jamie, it's now sitting as completed. And action buttons are gone. What I'm going to quickly do now, just for the benefit of the regions and playing areas that use the away team confirms, is I'm going to apply that. And I'll also put in that stop. All right. So I'm going to keep Laura in here. She's going to be going to round two. And I'm going to log out of this person, Jamie. And I'm going to log in as myself. And I'm going to be the away team. Uh, apologies for that. Okay, so I've got obviously quite a bit of admin. So my clubs. And what I'll quickly do here, I'm getting a lot of questions about entering competitions. Um, a lot of regions, which I'm really happy with and playing areas are now getting their members to enter state events through their bowls link. Um, it's very similar to teams and results. You go to competitions, um, you go to my competitions, but you go to available. You will get a huge list of competitions here. Uh, our playing areas and regions have been asked to put their title in the competition. So if I was gonna enter a Yarra event, I type in Yarra, and all the Yarra events now come up for me to enter. So this is why it's really important to be able to log into your bowls link. Now, if I wanted to enter the Yarra men's singles, I'd hit enter competition. Once you're in there, it's basically an online form uh, that it will guide you through. Now, if you are entering a team event like pairs, triples, or fours. It's a little bit slow at the moment. Um, so for a, a team event, you would, you only, only one person needs to do that on behalf of the team. So if I'm entering pairs, I can go in and enter for myself and my partner. Not sure why that's uh, spinning there. But there's the Yarra events. So for example, triples, I'd go in here, enter the competition. I would fill that out and if I would hit save. It will then ask for my other two members and I, I can do that on behalf of the other two members. They don't need to go in and do that. All right, we'll go back to entering teams and results, manage results, round two. All right, so you'll see straight away, there's no finalized match down the, down the bottom here. So straight away, you know that the away team confirms this match. Um, Auburn could go back in and select team, but once you do one round, you can always import a previous team, sorry, previous round sides. So import teams, choose the round and hit import teams. Um, so I'll click that and update that one. So very similar, put the results in as the home team. The away team doesn't get the ability to do that. And hit save. You do similar, you get to unfinalize that side match if you make a mistake. And hit save. And do the same for the other team.
All right. And then as it says down the bottom, the scores have been entered and are pending approval by the away team. Now, as the home team, I could have also marked that game as unplayed. We'll talk about washouts and heatouts. So I put the reason in there. Heat out. And I would put finalised match and hit submit. I'm not going to do that. If I hit wanted to, if one of the teams was forfeiting, just say, for example, HBC were unable to field a team, I would hit forfeit match. I would select HBC, hit finalise and hit forfeit. In a forfeit, the team that's giving the forfeit will lose all of their players. All right, so I'll go in as the away team here. You'll see that the scores are in there. And there's a confirm button down the bottom. So the scores have been entered by Auburn and a pending confirmation. Click the uh, confirm button to, con to finalize the match. So the away team can match the skips. So for example, Greg needs to be playing Denise, swap the away teams, make that Denise. And there we go. Away team, as you can see, can't change the results. They can manage their team before they hit submit or confirm, sorry. And hit confirm. All right. So that's the two methods. Um, just check with your region or playing area which method uh, you'll be using. Um, I highly recommend that the home team can finalise. All right, let's bring in our experts, Bob and John, to talk about some of the conditions of play. How are you going, Bob? Welcome. All right, thank you. Very straightforward or not? <laughs> um, lucky I'm not involved in bowls. Thank you. Not, not yet, Bob. Not yet. <laughs> How are you going, John? Yeah, good, thank you. That's good. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, Bob, we might start with you just on uh, those two conditions of yep. plays that our side managers need to be aware of. Okay, Matt. Uh, yes, there are a couple of uh, clauses within the conditions of play for both Metro and regional pennant that um, I'd like to highlight tonight. The first one being the draw for rinks. And as it indicates on the slide there, that's uh, clause 27 for Metro pennant. And it's uh, clause 23 for regional pennant. Conditions are the same in both uh, conditions of play. In relation to the draw for rinks, that's one of the major roles that the side manager actually does on the day of play, and one of their key responsibilities. And in order to see that it's a fair and open draw for rinks, the cards should be shuffled and exchanged by the side managers. After they have been shuffled and exchanged, one manager should then place their cards face down and the opposing manager would then place their cards on those first set of cards that have been placed down. Um, <clears throat> it's important that they be placed face down to, to ensure that it is a, um, a blind draw. And um, the important part, in, important matter in timing for the um, draw for rinks is that it should not be done until after the pre-pendant practice has completed, has been completed, and before the trial ends commence. <clears throat> there have been situations in the past where the draw for rinks has been done while players are having their pre-pendant practice. The manager then goes out and informs the particular rinks on which uh, rink they will be playing, and they had moved from one rink for practice to go to the actual rink that they will be playing on. That should not occur. So the draw for the rink should not be done until after the pre pendant practice has finished, but before the commencement of the trial ends. <clears throat> the next clause that I want to highlight is clause 33 for Metropolitan Pennant, and that's clause 27 for Regional Pennant. Again, 
the uh, provisions within both are the same. Abandonment of games, that can be done by Bowls Victoria. It happens occasionally, generally in emergency situations where there might be um, uh, a weather warning that warrants the, the games to be abandoned either in a particular playing area or statewide. Um, and in that case, the points are shared between the competing sides. There's also the ability for a games to be abandoned after play has commenced, but they relate to very limited situations under which the side managers can agree to abandon, ga abandon games after commencement. And John will talk more about the provisions relating to those conditions uh, when he does a, a section later on. Um, <clears throat> importantly, when we're dealing with games that are abandoned uh, prior to the completion, the provisions relating to the number of ends completed, which is set out in Metropolitan Penitent Conditions of Play Clause 33, for example, using the uh, 16 aside game, in that situation, if the combined total of ends completed, is 60 or above, the game is constituted and the points and scores will stand at the time the game is abandoned. If less than 60 ends are completed, the uh, the game is, uh, no point, sorry, points are shared for the game. <clears throat> um, in the third point there in relation to abandonment of games relates to the COVID restrictions. And um, we're still in a COVID environment and provisions relating to the abandonment of games due to COVID uh, has been left in, in the event that the government does impose some uh, restrictions at some stage during the pennant season. Hopefully that won't be a situation, but we've left it in from last season in the event that something does arise during the coming season. So that covers my components there. Thank you, Matt. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Over to you, John. Thank you. Um, so I'm just talking to you about um, clause 34 and 35. 34 is about um, the responsibility for entering full teams on bowls link prior to the commencement of the game. If that doesn't happen, um, then um, it could result in a penalty of uh, $100 or deduction of competition points uh, for a club side concerned. Um, and the penalty is at the discretion of Bowles Victoria. Um, the results must be submitted by the home club and confirmed by the away club by six o'clock um, after the game was played um, and three o'clock if it's played midweek. Um, so if the home club fails to enter the results uh, or the away club fails to confirm the results, um, <laughs> Once again, Bowles Victoria has the has the, at their discretion a penalty of either a hundred dollar fine or deduction of competition points. So this happened last year. Um, there was some leniency given at different times. Obviously, Bowles Victoria listened to the, each case as it, as it happens, but um, you know clubs did lose points. Um, if the situation, um, if a side receives a walkover, a forfeit or a buy, they must submit the names of the selected players for finals eligibility. Um, so my understanding of bowls, if a forfeit occurs, team A forfeits and team B won on forfeit, that the system knocks team A out and um, their team is taken out so you can't... Um, they, they can't be afforded any um, eligibility for the for finals. So buys right. obviously um, are important that you get the correct team num names in there because the, a buy does go towards um, eligibility for finals. Um, if uh, there's been, um, if the club think that there needs to be a correction done on bowls link, then the request needs to go to uh, Bolsvik, and there's a particular form that they need to fill in, which would uh, and needs to occur within 48 hours of the game being completed. Um, 
What's really important for side managers is and, and clubs is that you store all of your scorecards. So you keep them until a week after the last game. Um, and um, at least I'd say keep them till right till the end of the finals. Um, but um, it's so important because if there are disputes that gets down to that level in the end, um, we go to the scorecards to actually check the scorecards uh, and check the maths and, and et cetera, et cetera, and the names. So please um, remember that sort of stuff. Um, now we come to abandonment by agreement. So this is a very interesting one. So we know that there are um, times, only certain times that um, uh, two side managers can agree uh, to abandon the game. Um, one, one is weather, one the other is safety of players. Obviously, an unfortunate situation if someone dies uh, playing bowls um, and uh, other, other weather like rain, lightning, um, et cetera, et cetera. Well, probably this, is, which, this highlights a couple of things to me. The first thing it highlights is the one reason why um, a side manager cannot be an umpire of the day, you really need to have two separate roles here because if it is raining, for example, team A says, no, nah, it's too wet. Team B says, no, nah, it's not that wet, just a, bit of, uh, just a bit of a drizzle. Team A says, no, it's too wet, we're, we're going off. So the two side managers can't agree. So they need to call to the, talk to the umpire and say, we can't agree, you give us your, your uh, decision. So obviously you can't have the umpire talking to themselves or the side manager. Um, so you really need to have two separate, um, the two separate roles and they need to be two different people. Um, I'll just go through the interruption to play and stoppage um, conditions again. So we're playing and for whatever reason we need to stop um, and both teams um, have agreed to stop. Uh, if it goes past 10 minutes, then it becomes a stoppage. But if it's within 10 minutes and you go back on, it's an interruption to play and the heads remain as they are um, and you continue the game on. If it goes past 10 minutes, it's a stoppage and those ends are declared dead and you need to replay the end once you get back on there. Now, for whatever reason, if the game has been stopped for one hour, now this is not an accumulation of time, this is each event. Um, if the game is stopped for more than an hour, then the game has been is, is ended. Um, if at that point, the either side has actually played enough ends to constitute a game, well, then that's, that's it, that's the call. Um, I think uh, I've seen, it's, the weather stuff's fascinating. Uh, my observation uh, is that Premier Division will play in pouring rain. Division six will abandon after sometimes if there's if it's a bit wet. So I think you just need to take in consideration, get agreement between the, the managers, but also be wary of your decision at your game has an impact within your um, section. Uh, a couple of years ago, it was the last uh, game of the year, uh, happened to be, and it was pretty wet and miserable. Um, and I, I observed a team who weren't never going to make the finals and it was a bit rainy. They basically refused to go back on and so they forfeited. Um, and that gave enough points to the other team to get into the finals and a team that should, probably should have been in the finals missed out. So to show respect to opposition and to your whole competition, I think you really need to take um, this part of this game quite seriously. Um, lightning is an interesting one. So lightning is occurs, you need to stop the game immediately um, and you need to wait for 30 minutes of not any any sign of lightning. Um, I'm, I'm aware rurally, um, because of the lay of the land and the local knowledge, you, you'll have people say, oh, that's 20 kilometres away. That's not going to get to us. That's 20 kilometres away, which could be accurate. But the facts are is if you see and hear lightning, you need to stop and you need to wait 30 minutes um, and uh, before you go back out on on the um, in, on the greens. Um, I think that's about it.
uh, for me. Um, well, the other thing I was going to mention around pre-pennant practice, it worked very well, um, particularly on Saturdays um, and generally on midweek as well. But midweek, because the greens had to be prepared so much earlier in the day, if you are travelling a long distance, I, my advice would be to check with the club, are the greens going to be ready? Because it's very frustrating, to, to particularly if it's a long distance of travel, you're expecting to um, have a roll up um, and um, you get there and the green keepers, the, the greens just simply aren't ready. We had a ridiculous situation last year where an away team turned up. The green wasn't ready. In fact, the green keeper was still rolling the green, but yet they, they took it upon themselves to actually start their roll up to the point where the green keeper used his roller to push some of their balls into the ditch. I mean, that's just crazy stuff. That shows no respect to anybody. Green keepers have the ultimate say. They can close the green whenever they wish, and they can tell you when the green is open. So just be careful, particularly, once again, if you're travelling long distance, it doesn't hurt to give a call the day before to the club and say, do you think your clubs will be available for pre printed practice uh, when we get there in the morning? The other thing about weather... And I don't think it's done enough, is that um, if we know it's going to be stinking hot, um, there is no reason, so long as both sides agree, that you can't start the match much earlier in the day. So I think that's something that we probably need to get used to doing and having a look at. It makes a lot of sense. Um, and um, the other thing is, if you opt to, if you're talking, we're talking about um, Saturday pennant, if you opt to play on Friday night, two teams agree, it doesn't matter what division or what where, where they play. If they decide to play on a Friday night, which is, that's fine, they need to let Bowls Victoria know that. Um, if that game never started, in other words, it absolutely poured buckets or whatever happened and the game never started, they're entitled to start the game the next day. However, if they go out on Friday and they start playing and there's buckets down and they can't finish their game, they cannot finish it the next day. So that game would be, according to, would be abandoned by agreement, um, et cetera. Uh, I think I've covered all the points. Are any, uh, any other questions or something else I haven't covered, Matt? No, I think you've done a great job, uh, John. I think the real big one is the wet weather. A lot of our clubs are still unsure when to call that game and how to call it. So I think knowing that the side managers need to agree first, if that doesn't occur, go to the umpire. Yeah. Um, obviously, if the game uh, is stopped for over an hour, then the game is is yeah. is called. I think that's a really important one for our side managers to. And the other thing that, know. that creates sometimes creates a bit of tension or a bit of um, anxiety is um, we're at the one club and one or two greens stop, but the other green keeps playing. And that's completely okay because the side managers are in consultation with one another. Um, so, um, and, and I, I believe, John, it's generally the rule. If you start to see pooling uh, sure. water on the green, that's sure. a sign that maybe it's, sure. it's, too, it's too wet. And if there's the, no pooling, no. you really should be continuing. I think so too, but unless it's... I mean, some green, particularly early in the season, may be a bit slippery due to algae and other stuff. So unless it's unsafe because yeah. of uh, a bit of moisture, then that would be a good reason not to do it. Um, but I, I agree with you. So, um, um, yeah. Thank you. Um, stay with us because yeah. I'll get Mel to come on now and um, I'm sure we'll have some questions about conditions of play. Just one that's come through, um, must the game be played on the Saturday if it doesn't get started on the Friday, if they'd, if they'd arranged to play on the Friday? The answer to that is yes. Yes. You can't play it on Sunday or the next Friday. Okay, so hopefully that answers that for you all. But um, if you've got a further question, just type it in the chat. Um, the other thing that I wanted to, which we didn't cover, um, we did mention this morning was um, you have five hours to complete a game uh, of bowls. Um, and, and that's in the case of where the game stops and starts. Um, but um, 
if the game is continuing on and it's just a slow game, you, you can go past five hours. That's correct, Bob? Yes, that's correct. Yes. If there's no interruption to the game, there is no limit on the time for completion of that game. But if a game is delayed in starting, or if there's an interruption or a number of interruptions throughout the game, that that game must conclude after five hours following the scheduled start time, regardless of the number of interruptions. And that's where the points and, and allocation of shots relating to an abandoned game would come into play, depending on the number of ends completed, whether the game is regarded as constituted or not. Yeah. And the, the number of ends is across the whole side. It's not that each each team has to play 15 ends, is it, for a 16? That's correct. Yeah, it's the total number of ends completed by the, the all teams within the side, not averaged against each team. Yeah. Any other questions there, Mel? Just a further a continuation from the earlier question, must it be played on Saturday if it can't be played on the Friday or can it be by agreement? Does it have to be the Saturday or can it be by agreement? No, it needs to be played on the Saturday. The provisions for playing another day have not been included in the conditions of play and the side managers don't have the option of abandoning that game under those conditions. I think that answers that. Um, if a game is played until 6 p.m., then bowls link won't be entered on time. Are we, do we have the 6 p.m. cutoff at the moment, Matt, for bowls link entries? No, there's no actual cutoff in there. There's a recommendation that they need to be done by a certain time. Bowls link won't stop taking results. Uh, we just need to have those results in by 6 p.m. And obviously, common sense, if the if the game's going over, uh, Bowls Link will handle that. And it, it, it is 45 ends for midweek game if you're playing 12. It, it's a sliding scale that goes down depending on how many players are in, um, in the competition. Thanks, John. <clears throat> There's no further questions outstanding. Okay. Are there any hands up? <laughs> no hands up at the moment. Okay, cool. All right, we'll 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 push on. Um, thank you for manning those questions, Mel. No worries. Um, I'll just finish with uh, some best practice and and how you can get support from Bowls Victoria. So thank you again, Bob and John. Really appreciate the support that uh, you give me and all our training webinars. Um, I know I learn a lot each time you come on. So thank you again for joining us. Right, best practice. Um, I've mentioned this already. You really need to have those teams in prior to the game starting. Um, really important that you don't finalize or confirm a game unless uh, they are correct. Obviously, if it's the away team confirms, you don't have the ability to change the results. You can contact the home team to change them. And don't don't forget that if if the are if the results are incorrect in bowls link, they can always be fixed by the controlling body. You can access bowls link um, on your phone. I don't recommend phone. It can be quite small, tablet, laptop, or club computer. It's all internet-based, so you do not need to have it only just on one computer. And please refer to the Bowls uh, Victoria website for the latest version of the conditions of play. Support at Bowls Victoria. Obviously, uh, Jimmy is a great resource for, uh, and he's our events and competitions manager. Um, Amanda works very closely with Jimmy and she's now becoming a Bowls Link guru. So if you have any questions about transfers, um, you can't get on to me about some questions about Bowls Link, please try Amanda. Uh, my role is education and training. So I, I do a lot of work with our regions, uh, playing areas and our clubs. Um, I've also got there the Bowls Vic 
uh, website. We'll finish by having a look at that. And um, as you can see, John and, and Bob, um, are just a wealth of knowledge there. Um, they're another great resource. Just going on to our website, um, if you're looking for resources, Club Assist is the place to go. If you go down to education and training, uh, you'll see that there's some quick links at the top. Uh, this is where we advertise registration for our upcoming webinars. But if I want to quickly go to umpiring, coaching or bowls link, I'll click on bowls link. Um, we mentioned this form in this morning session. Um, if any club needs to update their club administrators by adding or removing, that's the form that you need to fill out. Here are some quick help videos that you might want to send your members, especially that one there, how to enter competitions through Bowlslink. A lot of our members are finding that difficult. Uh, how to reset your Bowlslink password. And here's all our webinar recordings. So if you're a new administrator, webinar one, I highly recommend you view that. Um, and obviously the conditions of play and tonight's webinar will get added there for you to access uh, and share with your members. So thank you again for joining us. Um, I hope uh, if you're a side manager this year, you now have more confidence in your role, uh, especially those conditions of play. And, and please don't be afraid to, uh, to take on the bowls link side of it. Thank you again. Uh, and we'll see you for another training webinar soon.